Hello, my name is John Griffith, and together with my colleagues Lynn Harden, Anna Gold, Katya Schlosser, and countless others at the University of Colorado Boulder, we're working to connect the public and classrooms to the Mosaic Expedition, one of the largest Arctic expeditions ever attempted. The Mosaic Expedition aims to better understand the changing Arctic climate system by freezing a ship in Arctic sea ice and drifting with the ice along the uh, transpolar current for an entire year. So during this drift, uh, research equipment has been deployed up to 50 kilometers away from the research vessel Polar Stern. And again, we'll drift with the ice across the Arctic, gathering atmosphere, sea ice, ocean, ecosystem data to better inform climate models and to put the Arctic, the changing Arctic climate system in the context of, the glo of global climate change. As you can imagine, there are so many cool and amazing stories coming out of the Mosaic Expedition. Uh, most notably, perhaps, the dynamic ice flows pose so many challenges. As wind and currents shift the ice around, we see ice ridges forming and eating up cables and other instruments and having to be rescued quite frequently. Storms are blowing over uh, large meteorological towers. Animals like polar bears and curious Arctic foxes are, are messing with equipment. And then the logistics. Again, I mentioned earlier, something like 500 scientists um, working on Mosaic throughout the year. Logistical challenge of just getting uh, scientists and equipment to and from the ice, especially um, um, uh, uh, with the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Lots of challenges there. And so it's these stories the science that we're trying to, to tell in our engagements. And so our main resource where we're highlighting these engagements is the mosaic.colorado.edu slash education page. And this is where you'll find all of our uh, up-to-date resources, including videos, pictures, virtual expeditions, so on and so forth. One of our most popular resources for classrooms has been this Mosaic Monday, and it's a weekly update from the Arctic, and it includes engagements, math problems, highlights for the virtual tours we've developed, uh, and other tracking uh, data, some real-time data. So I thought I'd highlight one of these Mosaic Mondays so you get a sense of what it in entails. Uh, in this particular issue, um, it's highlighting the fact that the polar stern was further away from civilization than the International Space, Space Station, which required of those on board to prepare for any sort of challenges and threats to through the ship. And so what they had to do is create an airstrip uh, for planes if, if they, people had to be evacuated. And so the engagement here was uh, students had to use Gold's formula to figure out how thick sea ice must be to support a small plane. Uh, there are some videos of planes taking off runways on, on the ice. Um, so that, that was an engagement that was quite popular. And then Ask Mosaic, hashtag Ask Mosaic. Um, we're looking for the public, for students to ask questions, post them on this submission form here. Simply a Google form, a Google, and uh, we'll take those questions, send them along to Mosaic scientists. In this particular question, the question is, have you been able to spot wildlife other than polar bears and sea animals? And the answer is yes. Curious Arctic foxes who have actually been a little bit of a nu nuisance eating some of the, chewing through some of the cables up in the Arctic. We use that uh, kind of authentic story to connect students to different Arctic adaptations of animals like Arctic foxes. So, considering why might the mischievous arctic fox have different colored coats depending on the seasons and so students have to grapple with that question a little bit we also offer opportunities weekly opportunities for classrooms or students to track the ship uh, and so we provide the coordinates coordinates of the polar stern each week students plot those coordinates onto a map and again you can can check out the, the drift path of that we also have students um, plotting the day length, air temperature, and Arctic sea ice extent, and see how those three variables change over the course of the year. You can see during December and January, November to the winter months, day length goes to zero, and you can imagine what that does to temperature and sea ice extent. So students would plot these data onto this logbook here, 
We update the logbook every few months to keep up with the dates and they can plot those and, and observe patterns and, and try to create some questions of that. Another resource we have here highlighted uh, each week, Reach the World. So maybe bi-weekly mosaic scientists uh, get on a YouTube call. Um, and so most recently here, Dr. Jesse Cremian from Colorado State University explaining how uh, she collected samples during the first few months of mosaic. And so in this call, uh, lots of good, good field pictures. Uh, it's interactive. Students can ask questions in the YouTube chat uh, to which the, the scientists will respond. Reach the World also has logbooks, pictures that come from that speaker. So students can read a little bit of, ahead of time about that researcher, about that scientist before hopping on the call. Um, so that's a little bit, uh, those are some of the things that you can find in, in a Mosaic Monday. And all of those different engagements are embedded in other places as well. And so if you're looking for Ask Mosaic questions to submit or just to see what others have asked and read other answers, you'll find that in this tile. Any artwork, calling all artwork, we're looking for poets, painters, uh, any, any kind of art, we have people who make mugs that are Arctic inspired. Um, and so you'd submit your, your masterpieces here and we'll, we'll highlight those in galleries in, in one of those uh, nine major themes. Videos that we've produced, um, including interviews with polar bear guards, the cook from the ship or other scientists are highlighted on our page here. Virtual expeditions. And so we have a number of, of virtual expeditions, one coming out this week. Um, the one highlighted on our page, uh, students will get to tour the Fram, uh, this, this wooden ship, the first uh, wooden ship to, to go into the Arctic and be intentionally frozen in sea ice and drift with the sea ice to try to reach the North Pole. So the Fram expedition went from 1893 to 1896, and this ship actually succeeded in drifting across the North Pole, or across the Arctic with sea ice, did not succeed in reaching the North Pole. That's a pretty amazing story, which you'll learn more about by clicking on these white icons, these points of interest. Uh, you can go between different rooms, you can hop on the ship, you can hop in different rooms. And so this is a really a fun virtual tour for students to connect with, with this uh, historic expedition. Um, another really engaging um, resource that we have here, this interactive produced by the Alfred Wagner Institute. Um, each day there's an image, a blog post. <clears throat> you can connect with, with the stories from the ship daily. You can track the ship, uh, both its drift path and the weather. Uh, and a really nice, uh, fun interactive here in the bottom left corner, you can click on this image and you can look at the Fromm expedition. So the mosaic kind of follows in the footsteps of this 1893 Fromm expedition. You can see the drift of the Fromm, read the into the diary of expedition leader Friedhoff Nansen, look at some pictures. So that's a really nice connection and something that you could use at the start of each class uh, or challenge your students to, to compare and contrast. And then we have a for the classroom. So all the engagements that we've produced as well as engagements produced by um, those that we work with a broader impacts network. So others promoting the Arctic and mosaic expeditions um, can be found here and is easily searchable at the top. Um, one last thing I wanna highlight here, um, we just uh, also produced and published a MOOC, a massive online course, open online course related to mosaic. So it's got 40 or 50 speakers. Um, you can go to the course, complete the course for free, watch videos, uh, conduct assessments. If for a small fee, if, if you're a teacher looking for some graduate credit, 60 to $80, uh, you could watch the videos, um, complete the assessments and receive some graduate credit for that. Uh, the videos are also available on YouTube. And so they're broken out into individual models, atmosphere, sea ice, ocean, among others. Um, so that's a little bit about some of the resources that we have. We're also going to highlight uh, in our Nesta talk after the share uh, two new curriculum that we've developed, uh, both rooted in anchoring phenomena, exploring the first, exploring the Arctic of the past and the present.
the new and old Arctic. So comparing the Fram and Mosaic expeditions. So uh, students are presented with this phenomena and then each lesson thereafter are provided with evidence that helps them model and explain that phenomena at the end. And then an Arctic feedbacks um, unit looking at why the Arctic might be warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. So again, lots of activities to provide students with evidence uh, that they'll use to model uh, and explain that, that anchoring phenomena. So just to kind of recap some of the things we've had, we've got two mosaic related curriculum, both rooted in anchoring phenomena, implementing the virtual tours, real time data, among other things. Uh, mosaic Monday, the weekly update, where you can track the ship, conduct math problems, other engagements. Um, the mo the mo March 23rd Mosaic Monday uh, includes a complete list of resources that you can do at home. Uh, that's also available. That list is also available on our webpage. And then the massive open online course, uh, Frozen in the Ice. Watching some of those videos, some of the con completing some of those assessments, participating in the discussion board. Lots of ways to connect with Mosaic. Um, Thanks for listening. Uh, please join me in the share-a-thon uh, to ask questions and I'd be happy to chat more. Thank you.